Today we're looking at President William Henry Harrison. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. So, William Henry Harrison was the ninth president of the United States from March 4th, 1841 to April 4th, 1841. That, that's right, he was president for only one month, making him the shortest serving president in U.S. history. So, there really isn't much to cover as far as, you know, what he did while he was president. So, let's go back and look at his background. Harrison was born on February 9th, 1773, near Richmond, Virginia. He's actually the last president to be born prior to the U.S. declaring independence from Britain. His father, Benjamin Harrison, was actually one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. His family was quite wealthy, and so he was educated at home, but eventually pursued a medical degree at the University of, of Pennsylvania, but dropped out in 1791 when he was, was only 18 years old to join the U.S. Army. Harrison soon found himself involved in the Northwest Indian War, also called the Ohio War, which was a conflict between the United States and the Northwest Confederacy of Native Americans for control of the Northwest Territory, which includes Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, and Wisconsin today. Harrison became an aide to General Anthony Wayne and fought at the Battle of Fallen Timbers in August of 1794, which secured victory for the United States in the war. The following year, in 1795, Harrison married Anna Tuthill Sims. Together, they would have 10 children, but only four of those children would survive to see Harrison become president. Interestingly, though, their son, John Scott Harrison, would grow up to become a congressman from Ohio, and he would father his son, Benjamin Harrison, who would be the 23rd president of the United States. So actually, William Henry Harrison is the grandfather of Benjamin Harrison. In 1798, William Henry Harrison resigned from the military and began his political career. He was named the Secretary of the Northwest Territory by President John Adams and then became the territory's first representative to the U.S. Congress. In 1800, Ind the Indiana Territory was established by Congress and Harrison became the territory's first governor, or really the first governor governor of Indiana. For 12 years, he would hold this position, and it was during this time that he negotiated several treaties with Native Americans to get more land. Many of these tribes, though, did not agree with these treaties and refused to leave their land. So, in 1811, then-Governor Harrison called for U.S. troops to come to Indiana to remove those that refused to leave. On November 7, 1811, the Battle of Tippecanoe took place near the confluence of the Tippecanoe River and the Wabash River in west-central Indiana. Harrison led about 1,000 American troops into the battle against somewhere around 700 Native American warriors under the leadership of Tecumseh. The Americans were victorious, and the battle gave Harrison really national attention, and many began to call him Old Tippecanoe. Shortly after, Harrison resigned as governor of Indiana to become a general in the War of 1812. Harrison would lead American forces in the Northwest Territory and won a major victory at the Battle of Thames against Native American and British forces. After the war was over, William Henry Harrison moved to Ohio, where he was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, and then a few years later became a U.S. Senator. In 1836, he was nominated by the Whig Party to be candidate for the, pre for the presidency, and he ran against Democrat Martin Van Buren. Van, Van Buren won basically riding the coattails of President Andrew Jackson's popularity since Van Buren was Jackson's vice president. But then, four years later, in 1840, the Whig Party again nominated Harrison. He ran with running mate John Tyler as his vice president. So... Calling back to his popularity from back in 1811 in defeating Native Americans in Indiana, his slogan was, Tippecanoe and Tyler too. In this election, Harrison easily defeated Van Buren since many blamed Van Buren for not really doing anything about the economic collapse in the Panic of 1837. At 68 years old, William Henry Harrison would be the oldest president in history until Ronald Reagan was inaugurated at the age of 69, and then President Donald Trump, who was even older, at 70 when he was inaugurated. March 4, 1841 was a cold and wet day in Washington, D.C. Harrison rode on a white horse to the inauguration without a coat or a hat, basically to discredit some of his critics that said he was too old to be president. 
He then went on to deliver the longest inaugural speech in history. At over 8,000 words, it took him almost two hours to deliver the speech, and all of this while standing outside in the cold. He then attended three inaugural balls that evening. The next morning, Harrison woke up with a cold, which then progressed into pneumonia, and then William Henry Harrison died of pneumonia on April 4th, 1841, the shortest president in office at only 30 days. John Tyler was then sworn in as the new president of the United States, and so in 1841, it was the only year in which we see three presidents in one year. Martin Van Buren at the beginning of the year, William Henry Harrison in the middle, and then John Tyler uh, eventually becoming president. So with that, hopefully you learned something, and thanks for watching.